Hey everyone, Mr. CPA here today. I'm going to be talking about inventory, uh, specifically how we calculate inventory. I get these questions a lot. People always want to know, how do I calculate cost of goods sold? How do I calculate purchases? How do I calculate ending inventory, beginning inventory, whatever the case may be. Um, so I'm going to show you the accounting equation for how we accountants figure this stuff out. And I'll walk you through each component of it, kind of explain it to you so that you can kind of understand it a little bit more in detail as to how you can calculate your inventory components. So got my nifty uh, whiteboard here today. So you'll see, when we're talking about um, inventory, we're talking about this equation, the calculation. You've got beginning inventory, plus your purchases, minus your COGS or your cost of goods sold, and that equals your ending inventory. This is, this is you know, as accounting as we can get with it. And what I like about this equation is it's basically an algebraic equation. You know, if you think about it, A plus B minus C equals D. And so that makes it really helpful when we're trying to figure out one or, you know, some of the pieces of it. Downside to the equation. I've got to know three of the numbers. If you think back to your school days, you can't calculate inventory, or I'm sorry, you can't calculate an algebraic equation if you've got too many variables. And in this case, you know, we could solve for x all day long, we'd just go in circles. So let's avoid that. And let me try to explain it to you to simplify it a little bit. So <clears throat> you've got beginning inventory, which is the beginning amount of inventory you start your financial year with. So you're running a business, you got a retail shop, online seller, e-commerce, whatever. Let's say it's your first year. Guess what? Beginning inventory, zero dollars. Zero. It's perfect. It is the perfect starting jumping off point. I love it. Second, your purchases. How, when we say purchases, we're talking about purchases of inventory. I started my business at zero inventory. I went out and spent $10,000 on inventory. Guess what? $10,000 purchases. Perfect. Now we've got down to the, these first two numbers usually are pretty easy for us to figure out. We get down to this third one and the fourth one. That's when it gets a little bit more mathematically hard, I think. Um, cost of goods sold we have to think about what did we sell? What of the $10,000 $10, in purchases, what of that was sold you know, as cost of goods sold? What, what items did we sell that we made money on? Now, there's so much software out there and so many, so many retail establishments. I mean, if, you're, if you've got a shop, you're using Square, you're using some sort of uh, inventory system on site, perpetual inventory system, it's tracking this for you in real time. It's going to tell you. If you're selling online, you've got inventory labs, you've got Amazon, uh, you've got spreadsheets. You're keeping track of this stuff. And how often you update it dictates whether or not it's truly a perpetual system or not. But it should be able to tell you what items specifically were sold. Those would be considered your cost of goods sold. So if you're you know, if you buy $10,000 worth of widgets and you sell, you know, I don't know, maybe you've got two classes of widgets, A's and B's, and you sell a mix between the A's and the B's, now you've got cost of goods sold that equals whatever, right? Whatever the mix is, that number gets plugged in here. Finally, once you, once you do all this math, you grab ending inventory. Well, let's say, let's say you don't know cost of goods sold, you know your beginning inventory purchases, you don't know cost of goods sold, but you also know your ending inventory. You've got a nice spreadsheet, a nice report, and it says, Jared, you know, or whoever, I've got my ending inventory. Well, solve for X. What number do you have to plug in here to get your, bridge your gap between the other three numbers? That's cost of goods sold, has to be. What makes up that cost of goods sold? I couldn't tell you that, you know, that would require some analysis, but mathematically that's the amount. And that's what, you know, you can plug that in on your financial information and move on. Consequently, let's say you have beginning inventory and cost of goods sold and ending inventory. 
and you don't know how much you bought that month or quarter or year or whatever, same deal. Reverse engineer it, solve for X. What number would I had had to have had paid in purchases for me to make all of this roll the right way? Pretty simple. Another way to think of this, or another, another method too, it's something that I actually, I'm faced with this tax time every year. People come to me and they don't know what the beginning inventory was from the previous year. So we have to, we have to recalculate it. So what we do is I make them go count their ending inventory and we add back their cost of goods sold and we take out their purchases and we get their beginning inventory for that year. You know, sometimes, sometimes we need it for, for whatever we're working on and, and we have to back into it. Another great way to think about this too. Um, if you've got, let's say it is tax time and your accountant needs ending inventory for the previous year. So let's just say right now it's 2018. Let's say we were going to do your 2017 taxes right now. And I said, you know, Hey, Joe Schmo, I need your ending inventory. Here's what we, we could do. You might say, I don't have that information. Here's what we could do. We could take your ending inventory right now. Let's just say it's uh, May 31st. So I'll say, go count all your inventory. Tell me how much you've got. We're going to add back your cost of goods sold for the year. So you go and tell me how much you spent on all the goods you purchased. And then we're actually, or I'm sorry, we're going to, you're going to go back and tell me you're going to add back all of the goods that you've actually sold to people that you profited off of. Then we're going to back out all of the purchases you've made for inventory. I'm going to reverse engineer your beginning inventory. I'm going to, I'm going to do the equation backwards. And that's going to give me, in my example, it's going to give me beginning inventory for 2018. That was also your ending inventory for 2017. Perfect. So this equation is very powerful and it's very efficient too. It does not give you item level detail. It does not give you class level detail. It's not going to tell you what types of items you're selling. It's not going to tell you, you, you know, uh, jeans are profitable or, or movies or books or anything like that. It's not going to tell you what's selling, what's not. It's going to tell you the total number. And then most of the time, that's all you care about. I don't know that I would encourage anyone who's selling, you know, less than a million to really be tracking anything on, on a minuscule scale. It's probably a waste of your time. I think as business owners, resellers, even in retail shops, you know what's pushing and what's not. You know what you should be focusing your money on. Um, so this is essentially the, the, uh, you know, accounting equation for how you calculate inventory. I hope that it's helped somebody. I hope you, you know, you take a lot away from it. I'm going to do another video sometime soon about the tax consequences of inventory. So stay tuned on that. Be sure to check back on the channel for videos like that, like this, give me a shout out. Let me know what you guys want to hear about what, what topics I can cover for you. Um, be sure to subscribe to my channel, share it with others. Would love to hear some feedback and I look forward to talking with you guys in the future. All right. Thank you.